Hello, let's talk about this problem. So a car is behind a truck, but the truck is traveling more slowly than the car is. So let's draw a picture to kind of show what's going on here. So we have a road. This is my beautiful, beautiful road. And here's the truck. And the car is back here. Now the car is traveling 95 kilometers per hour, while the truck is only traveling 75. So the car is going to catch up to the truck. That is just going to happen. The problem is asking us, how long will that take to happen from the moment where the car is 210 meters behind the truck? Now, some people might look at this problem and think, okay, well, I just need to use the velocity formula to figure out how long it takes for an object at 95 kilometers per hour to travel 210 meters. But the problem with that is that as the car is traveling, the truck is moving a bit as well. So the distance that the car needs to travel to reach the truck is not just 210 meters, it's 210 meters plus however far the truck travels during that time frame. So there are really a couple different ways we can solve this, but let's start with re reminding ourselves of the speed equation. So speed is equal to distance traveled divided by the time interval. And since we're trying to solve for the time interval, we're going to algebraically solve this for delta t by multiplying both sides of the equation by delta t and dividing both sides of the equation by v. So delta t, the time interval, is equal to distance traveled divided by the average speed. And even though both the truck and the car are going to be traveling different distances before the car catches up to the truck, both vehicles still have the same time interval. They'll both have the same time of travel. That might seem obvious, but that actually does help us quite a bit. Because we can set, we can use this d over v formula to, on both the truck and the car to find a relationship between the variables we have and the variables we don't have. So some delta t, how, whatever the time is that we're trying to find, for the truck, it's going to be equal to the distance the truck travels, divided by the average speed of the truck. This is also going to be equal to d over v for the car, which for the car, it's going to be, again, however far the truck travels, because it needs to catch up with however far the truck travels during the time interval, but also plus the 210 meters it needs to first travel through to catch up. Then this is divided by the speed, the average speed of the car. Now this equation we've set up is actually pretty helpful to us because we're given the speeds of the truck and the car, so the only unknown in this equation is the distance the truck travels. So we can algebraically solve this equation to find how far the truck travels. Because we know that d truck, or I'll just call it dt for short, divided by the speed of the truck, and the truck speed is given as 75 kilometers per hour, and that's equal to the distance the truck travels, plus 210 meters, all divided by the speed of the car, which is 95 kilometers per hour. So let's rewrite this to algebraically solve for the distance the truck travels. And admittedly, this algebra is a little bit trickier than what we tend to end up with, because um, we have a dt on the left side of the equation and on the right side. So the first thing we'll do is we'll multiply both sides of the equation by 75 to get this out of the denominator, and then multiply both sides of the equation by 95 to get that out of the denominator. We don't want anything in the denominator. So that becomes dt, the left side becomes dt multiplied by 95 kilometers per hour, and the right side becomes dt plus 210 multiplied by 75 kilometers per hour. I'm dropping the units for now because it makes it easier to write. Uh, the right side of the equation, we can distribute the 75. So it's 75 dt plus 210 times 75. And now to bring the dt's into one term, we can subtract 75 dt from both sides of the equation. So the left side becomes dt 95 minus dt times 75 
equals 210 times 75. So factoring out the dt's on the left side of the equation becomes dt times 95 minus 75 equals 210 times 75. So solving for dt, the distance the truck travels is 210 times 75, all divided by 95 minus 75, which if we put into a calculator, gives us a distance that the truck travels of 787.5 meters. So this is how far the truck travels during the time it takes for the car to catch up. So all we got to do, we have a formula for delta t in terms of the truck. It's that delta t for the truck is equal to the distance the truck travels divided by speed. So 787.5 meters divided by its speed, which is given to us in the problem as 75 kilometers. We're going to need to convert this into meters per second to get an actual answer here. So if it's 75 kilometers per hour, then that's actually 75,000 meters per hour. And then we need to convert from hours to seconds, which is 3,600 seconds per one hour. So if you put all this into a calculator, then we find a period of time of about 38 seconds. So 38 seconds is the answer to this problem. Now, I did mention earlier that this is not the only way we can solve this problem. There is another method we can use that requires fewer steps, but might be trickier for physics beginners to wrap their heads around. And that second method is kind of based on the idea of reference frames. You see, the thing that's kind of annoying about the method I just used is the fact that we have to do all these algebra steps to consider how far the truck is traveling during that time. But what we can do is instead of looking at the problem from the reference frame of the ground, we can look at the problem from the reference frame of the truck, where instead of imagining that we as a bystander are standing on the side of the road watching the cars go by, we can imagine that we are in the truck looking at the car as it approaches us. Now from the reference frame of the truck, it does look as though the car only does need to travel 210 meters and no other distance to get to us. But of course, the issue there is that the relative speed is going to be different. But fortunately, finding relative speed isn't too hard. So if one object is traveling 95 kilometers per hour and another object is traveling 75 kilometers per hour, then the relative speed, the speed of the car relative to the truck, is just 95 kilometers per hour minus 75 kilometers per hour, which is just 20 kilometers per hour. This means that if we are sitting in the truck, then to us, it looks as though the car is only traveling 20 kilometers per hour. So let's take that relative speed and apply it to a distance of 210 meters and find the time interval. So that's distance over speed. So the distance is 210 meters or 0 0.21 kilometers and the distance and the speed is 20 kilometers per hour so once again we need to convert from hour for hours into seconds so that's 300 3600 seconds for one hour and put that into a calculator and we'll get the same answer we got earlier of about 38 seconds and so that is the answer to this problem i hope this video helped you out Please consider subscribing or donating to my Patreon link down below if you'd like to support this channel and you'd like to help me make more videos just like this one. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.